let's take a look at some of the updates we've been making to the new tool library. To turn on the preview, I'll click on my account name, go to preferences, and under preview features, I will look for tool library, turn on the checkbox, and now using any of the tool library menu commands, I will open the new tool library. So clicking tool library from the menu or selecting a new tool in an operation will open the new tool library. And you can see it's a new user interface. All the uh, commands and the experience is the same, but it looks new. And it is a brand new code base. So none of the code uh, is shared between the old library and the new library, despite all the functions working the same and all the libraries being compatible. And this will allow us to more easily make updates and add new features in the future. So we've got the list of libraries on the left, the tool list in the center, and we have the filters and info tabs on the right. So you can switch between info and filters. Filters used to be on the top left and we're in a fly out. Now they're actually part of the panel. Uh, selecting a tool will always jump to the info panel. So even if you are changing filters uh, and you select a tool, it will show info. I'll demo that in a minute. Up at the top, we have the commands for the libraries and the tools. And these buttons are dynamic. So when they're gray, the command is unavailable. If it's blue, that command is available. And when a command is grayed out and you hover over it, the tool tip will show you what you need to do in order to be able to use that command. So in this case, paste tool, it says copy one or more tools, then select the library to paste into. Okay, so if you want to use a command, you don't know why it's not working, this will help you do that. Okay, so some of the new commands or updates we've made to these uh, features, uh, for example, apply tool holder. So we used to have a command in the old tool library where you could copy and paste the holder, but you could only do this to one tool at a time. So let's say, for example, uh, I'm going to look at this library I have here. I have a couple of different holders here for all of these tools. And if I wanted to take one holder, let's use one that makes sense. Okay, BT40 blank, that'll be fine. So if I copy this holder, I go back to that library. Right now the apply holder command is still grayed out and says select the holder then press copy tool. Or in this case, it's gonna be a paste tool. But I click on a tool, the command becomes available. I can select multiple tools now, this is different before you could only do it one at a time. And if I right click and say apply holder to tools now, it'll say these are all the tools that I'm applying this change to, apply. I get a notification that the application was successful. And now all those tools have the same holder. So this is really convenient for people that want to um, do mass edits to their library. And we will be adding more mass editing features like this in the future. Another change is to the renumbering function. So the renumbering function before used to uh, renumber all tools that were visible all at once in the document. Um, and you had to be careful because you could end up renumbering tools that you didn't want to. Uh, with the new renumbering command, you simply shift select you can select one or shift select multiple tools and these tools become the tools that get renumbered. So if I click the renumbering function now, I can choose the number to increment from, the number to increment by, and then it shows me the resulting numbers for each of these tools. And you can see I selected five tools, it's only showing me five tools. So this is a nice improvement for users that are renumbering tools for a particular setup instead of for the whole document. And maybe um, they want to do a particular range but skip some numbers. This helps them do that. And there are some more updates that can be uh, added for renumbering tools, but this is a great start. All right, custom uh, columns. So in the old library, we had the ability to move around these columns, show and hide different ones, and we still have that. However, the UI component that we've used for this is this gearbox. And you click on the gearbox and you can check and uncheck the columns that you want to show. And you reorder them by dragging and dropping them 
in this list. So you can see there if I drag the corner radius under diameter, diameter is then placed before corner radius. And we're still working on updates to make sure that the column widths are remembered, uh, which ones you have shown are remembered. This way if you start resizing things so that things are the way you like, that will be consistent every time you open up the tool library. Uh, let's take a look at the new filters because the filters are fantastic in my opinion. So right now I've selected all libraries, so I'm looking at all tools. And what you do is you select the tool category and it starts showing you the relevant parameters that are available. So I've selected milling, I can select flat end mills and bull nose end mills. And then I can start adding other parameters and this is where things get different. Before, all of these parameters were a range so if you wanted to look for a particular diameter, you had to type that same diameter in for the min and max, for example, a quarter inch end mill. But in here, you can select from the drop down what type you want to filter by. And so you can still use a range, but let's say you were looking for a particular diameter. So I'll say equal to quarter inch. So now it's showing me just quarter inch tools. And you can stack filters, so you can say you're looking for a quarter inch tool that is you know, greater than or less than, or let's just say less than uh, half inch in flute length. So you can really narrow things down nicely. And then when you click on the tool, it shows you the info. You can always go back to filters and keep adjusting. And if you need to clear all filters, there's a button here that will clear all the filters and it shows you all the current filters that have been applied in this tooltip. And I'll click that button, clear all, and it brings you back to where you started. All right, let's look at creating a new tool. So within this document, right now I'm looking at a document library, I'll click the plus. It shows me a list of all the tools that are available to make. And you can always change the tool once you get into a tool definition, so you're not stuck when you select from here. I'll choose flat end mill. Okay, and this dialog should be familiar. It's the same tab layout, it's the same parameters, just with an updated UI. If I click on the cutter tab, you'll see that we now have all of the parameters in a list. You click on the parameter, it shows you a dynamic image on the right, and you get a tool tip. Uh, some of these have uh, defaults, so I believe if you type in a value, uh, we will be applying an update soon where these values keep an aspect ratio until you modify that parameter. So for example, shaft diameter by default will be equal to diameter. That way as you're changing these values, uh, the tool makes sense. And you can also apply your own formulas here. So if I did in fact want this to be tool diameter, I can type that in as a formula. So I'll say tool underscore diameter, enter. Okay, so now they're equal and I get this little FX symbol. You'll see this popping up in more places, but this means that this parameter is being driven by an expression. Okay, so I click on the parameter. It shows me the expression. It's fully highlighted, ready to, ready to edit. And that's something that is um, highlight to edit has been applied across the board. So if I click on a parameter, the complete number is immediately highlighted. I don't have to double or triple click or drag highlight or anything like that. I just click once and the whole parameter is highlighted. That's very convenient for input. Okay, moving on to the holder tab. Uh, this is not yet complete. Uh, right now you see a full list of all the holders that are available in the tool library. So you could search and select from here. What we're not showing is a preview. So if I click on one of these, I don't see a preview of that holder yet, but we will be able to, in the future, show a preview before you select the holder and apply it to the tool. So for example, I selected that holder. It's applied the holder information. It's applied it to the preview. The next big feature, this is really exciting, is the cutting data tab. Before, you could only have one RPM and a feed rate profile associated with a tool. Uh, you could have parameters like the surface speed and uh, some different um, RPM and feed rate parameters. Uh, basically, everything you see um, from feed per tooth here on up. But we've introduced 
the step down and step over values. So I turn on the checkboxes for those. And now this is a fully defined profile, which has an RPM feed rates for cutting feed rate, lead in, lead, in, lead out, things like that, but also a step down and step over. Those two parameters were missing before and, and uh, not having those meant we only ever had 50% of a cutting profile. And you can also define the coolant mode that is associated with this preset. So this could be flood or any other coolant mode available. And you can have multiple profiles per tool. This, this is extremely exciting. This has gotten really incredible feedback from a lot of people already. Uh, and of course, there can be future improvements like associating, associating presets with a particular material, but this solves the biggest problem of being able to store the cutting data at all. And you can rename these. So I could say that this is, for an example, uh, aluminum slotting. The next one could be, let's say, uh, brass finishing maybe. Just like that and again right now these are just strings that are names for these profiles but in the future we could associate this with a material library uh, we'll get to that when it makes sense in the future all of these parameters can be driven by a formula so you see some of these are driven by a formula by default for example uh, the rpm is driven by the surface speed and vice versa. So if I type one of these in, and also notice that when I click on a parameter, it highlights which parameters are being affected. So if I update this number, these blue numbers here are going to be updated based on this number. So let's put in a surface speed. So I'll put in 300, enter. And you notice now the feed rate is the driven parameter. If I highlight surface speed, notice the spindle speed is the only parameter that's affected. That's because we're still basing the feed rates based off of, um, well, the feed rate is fixed right now because the feed per tooth is fixed. Uh, I'm sorry, cutting feed rate is fixed. Feed per tooth is driven by feed rate. So let's change that. Let's say that the feed per tooth is going to be five thousandths. And now you see the cutting feed rate is the driven value. If I modify, the spindle speed, obviously we get these ones highlighted again. And the lead and feed rates by default are equal to the cutting feed rate. These could easily be a ratio. So I could say times 0.5 for 50%. And now whenever I update these values, let's make this 6,000 RPM and see what happens. The values change. So that's very exciting. Also the parameters for step or step over and step down can be based off the tool geometry. So let's say for the step down, it's really common that for uh, finishing, you'll just use a percentage of the uh, tool diameter for step over. So let's say that this is going to be tool diameter times 5%, right? So that gives me a value that is now driven. We see the equation symbol there, it's driven. And if I update the geometry of this tool, this value also becomes updated. So really powerful, looking forward to uh, users utilizing this. Also, we have a number of uh, cutting tool vendors, for example, Harvey, Datron, uh, that want to have their feed and speed data in our libraries. That way users don't have to go look up charts and things like that. All of those values will just be in this list. I, I know for a fact that like the Harvey charts have, for one tool, you could have hundreds of cutting profiles that you would have to input manually otherwise. Okay, what's next here? Let's take a look at one little thing before we move on. Um, the equations also by default drive the length and diameter offsets from the tool number. This is really handy for uh, users that are programming mill turn machines because the turret position number and the offset number might be a function. And so, for example, this could be tool number times 10. And we'll do the same thing here. Now, this way you could have a tool number that automatically will update the length and diameter offset accordingly. So that's great. And speaking of turning tools, there's one 
really nice update for turning tools that I want to point out is the ANSI code. So users before uh, would want to input the code for an insert that defines its shape, size, uh, other uh, pieces of geometry like corner radius. Those parameters were scattered about the uh, preview image and not in order. So it was actually pretty difficult to input a insert code to get what you want. Um, first of all, the ANSI codes are now presented in order. So if we have a CNMG 432 insert, you can type that in, hit enter, and it will update all of the parameters. So now we have exactly the tool that we were looking for. But you notice that these parameters here, so the drop downs and the custom values, these are presented in the order that they are shown in the NC code, which sounds kind of obvious, but we didn't have it like that before. So that was a really important change. And that's pretty much it for now. There's lots of other updates that we're making, uh, bug fixes, making sure the fit and finish is good. So if there's anything uh, totally obvious that I haven't pointed out yet, chances are that we're still uh, waiting for an update to be pushed out. But still looking for feedback and hope you guys enjoy.